It doesn't matter if you've been RVing for 40 years or four months, everyone has their RV screw up story. And we've got six of them for you today. Stay tuned. Okay, before we get started, the value in this video hopefully will become the comments section. So although we're going to give you six of our biggest screw-ups so far, there will be more to come, we want you to get down in that comment section and let us know about your best RV screw-up. We'd, like, we'd love to have a good laugh along with you. Um, you hopefully you'll be laughing at a couple of our screw-ups. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, this is just going to be a very casual conversation. I've got my list down here if you see me looking down. but. The first screw up, and this one is very embarrassing for me, but it involves a friend of mine, a very good friend of mine, and uh, he had just bought a new, it was used, but it was new to him, travel trailer, and first camping trip out, they're camping with us, he's looking for help with his water system. Long story short, we hooked the water up to his black tank flush. Not good. Ended up filling up his black tank, cracked, his black tank, water got into his underbelly. I noticed that his underbelly was sagging, and yeah, so we had to end up puncturing the underbelly. They couldn't use the restroom the entire trip. He ended up getting it fixed. It was like almost a thousand dollars to get it fixed, but that was a huge RV screw up, uh, really on my part and his part, but I definitely have to take some credit for that. So read your manuals. All right, number two on the list, and this one is a common newbie mistake. It's definitely happened to me. It was our, our first travel trailer. I had it hooked up here in the driveway, and at that time, I have a 30 amp uh, run outside of my house now, but at that time, I was plugging the RV up with one of the little 15 to 30 adapters inside the garage. Got everything hooked up, closed the garage, left. My neighbor calls me. She never calls me. We have each other's number strictly for emergency. She never gives me a call. Uh, but so I knew something was wrong. She calls me, hey, you're dragging your electric cord behind you. So yeah, I had closed the garage door down on it. It had ripped it underneath my garage door. The garage door sustained a little bit of damage, nothing that we had to have fixed. It's just a small dent. Uh, actually, the the rig didn't have any problems. It didn't pull anything loose or anything like that. That was a that was a miracle in itself. And it just had some scuff marks on the plug where I dragged it for about 200 yards. But yeah, I'd kept it plugged in and left forgetting to unplug it. All right, number three actually scared us a little bit. Uh, everything's good now. It's a funny story. But at the time, it really scared us. So we were, again, we were new campers, new RVers. Didn't have a good idea of how to set up and break down properly. And we ended up jacking our stabilizers up before we slid our slide in. And when we did that, as our slide was coming in, weight shifted and the entire tongue of the trailer fell off of the support up front. So when it did that, obviously the whole trailer just moves all at once and falls down. I thought the whole thing was collapsing. I didn't feel like an earthquake. Well, the first thing we're thinking is, oh my gosh, Tally is outside. I hope she's not around the RV. So we both run outside. Townley's fine, thank goodness. We have a, we, well, I look it over to make sure nothing's completely destroyed, and it wasn't. The jack actually held up. But uh, now it's a funny story. At the time, it was scary. So, hey, leave those jacks down until you get the, all those slides in. Number four on the list, and this one is just an idiotic move on my part, just a lack of research, I guess. My first weight distribution hitch. I purchased with the used trailer we bought. So a little bit of backstory, we bought a used travel trailer to see if we even enjoyed RVing. Uh, it was a cheap salvage title trailer. We used it for over a year and uh, it, was, it, it actually worked out well for us, but it came with its own weight distribution hitch. The previous owner included that in the sale. Well, we probably went on 10 or 12 trips and I never realized that it did not have sway control with it. So the older distribution hitches, they have the distribution part and then you have that old little tiny ball to the side that hooks up and that's your sway control. Well, 
I didn't do my research. I wasn't paying attention. I didn't have any sway issues, which is a that's that was a good thing, and, I, and it was never a red flag for me. But yeah, my first weight distribution hitch had no sway control, and that's just a bonehead move on my part for not researching. All right, number five on the list. This one's kind of a simple one, and I didn't check my spare tire, the pressure in my spare tire of my truck, for well over a year. And when I did, it was like 20 pounds. It's supposed to be 80. So bonehead move on my part, total screw up, didn't need it, didn't end up needing it, thank goodness, but I was basically running around for over a year with no spare because there was no way I could pump it up on the side of the road. So I uh, did a video about it, but I just felt like a complete idiot for not checking my spare tire because it's useless without enough air in it. All right, last but not least, and this is one of those things that we kind of got bit in the butt for trying to do the right thing. You know, when you when you unload your RV uh, uh, at the end of the weekend and you're ready to put it back in storage, you leave your fridge and your freezer open so it can warm up and the condensation forms and it, it, it's wet for a little while and it, you leave that little crack there so it can dry out. If you don't do that, you're going to have a lot of mildew, mold and mildew the next time you show up to your RV. So we do that every time. Well, we lost one of those little clips that comes with the refrigerators. I looked up on eBay, they're like $16 for a pair of those little plastic clips. That's crazy. I'm, I'm getting on a little uh, tangent here, but anyway, so we lost one. So I'd had the, I had the, the freezer door cracked. Well, I forgot to latch it when we hooked up to take back to storage. Long story short, we get to on our next camping trip. We turn the TV on that night for kids to watch a movie after showers, and our TV is shattered. Well, what happened is our TV sits right next to our freezer. And that freezer door during transport had swung out and shattered our TV. We didn't know it because during transport, the freezer door also came back over and latched. So the next time we saw the RV, everything looked normal. When we turned it on, all we have was a big spider web of, uh, of a TV. So and nothing worked. So that was a screw up on our part. Don't forget to latch your freezer or fridge doors. Okay friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are a newbie out there and even you experienced guys, you know, things happen. They do and it doesn't matter. Like I said, you've been doing it 40 years or four months. Things happen. Swallow some pride. Get down in that comment section. I want to hear your most embarrassing, biggest fail, biggest screw up, whatever you want to call it. Let's hear it. Let's all have a little fun. It's the holidays when I'm making this video, so let's, let's all have a little laugh at each other. Life is too short not to be able to laugh at yourself. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing.